educator shop. There's very few board members who get this. So any board member who does get it, it's very special. Well, congratulations to three members on our board. Ellison Downs has a master board member maintained. Tina Wanio is a master board member maintained and Laura Lukasik is a level two leadership. Congratulations guys, that's great. Congrats. Um, I, I'm sure you know your certificates and the, the little gifts that you receive will be delivered to your house. The umbrellas, right? Um, Allison, I'm not positive you're gonna get an umbrella this time. <laughs> Never Our, know what it's gonna be, it's a big surprise. Yeah, right. But <laughs> Allison, my umbrella I use regularly. It's very nice. Yeah, Allison didn't get one last time and was quite upset. So, oh, wow. oh. Okay. my guess is that um, Marisol is going to be able to get her an umbrella. <laughs> okay. I will try my best, Allison. <laughs> poor, <laughs> poor Marisol. You never heard this before at this minute. <laughs> Okay, um, we'll move on to old business action. At this time, I'd like to entertain a motion. The Board of Education approve press policy issue 105, policy changes as presented. I'll move. I'll second. Ellison and Anna. Any questions, comments, or concerns about the policy? Okay, Tina, call the roll, please. Sada? Yes. Alterez? Yes. Delzati? Yes. Desecchi? Yes. Downs? Yes. Iwanio, yes. Lukasic? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, everybody. We'll move on to new business information. Hybrid remote learning. Mm -hmm. So um, first of all, let me thank everybody for the amount of work that's being done to get our hybrid in-person e-learning schooling done. It has been phenomenal. Um, I don't know how to thank you guys enough for everything you've done. The administrators, the teachers, custodians, I mean, everybody who's done everything. Thank you so much. Lunch ladies, I understand, are, are working diligently to make sure our kids are still fed, um, which is a huge thing because I, I think everybody understands um, we fed quite a few children um, and we continue to do that. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all your work on this. Um, Ken? Yeah, I don't know what happened. There I am. Okay. Okay, there you are. Thank you. So uh, I put together a, a table here so that we could take a look at uh, what's going on over time, just so that everybody can understand the historical data and where we are now. Um, so back in, I want to just go through these tables with you just so that I, I would like some feedback basically from the board about what your thoughts are on our current conditions. Um, obviously, right? If you're watching the news, you see what's happening. It's ticking up everywhere. But before we talk about that, I would like for you to have good information about what things have looked at over time when we've made decisions. So going back to July 30th, when we decided that we were going to go full remote, we looked at a positivity rate in the 60176 zip code of 12.4%. Now there's a disclaimer there, right? Because at that time, if you remember, I, share, I talked to you about this, we were only able to get a positivity rate in a zip code over time. So back in July 30th, although the positivity rate was 12.4%, one could surmise that that was inflated because that positivity rate on July 30th was based on the number of positive cases from the beginning when the pandemic started. So we can assume that you know, in March and April, most people being tested were gonna be positive because they were the sickest patients. They were sick people, they were going into the hospital, they were getting tested. Our, our testing at that time was less than desirable, right? So that may, that a lot of people could assume that that was inflated. And we ran into some trouble with our leadership in the village over that because, you know, understandably he felt that that wasn't an accurate description because it was giving us a number going back to March. 
Um, what we were able to do though, was we were able to look at positivity at that time in the West Cook region. And in the West Cook region on July 30th, we were at 7.4%. So probably a little bit more realistic than what was, what was really happening in 60176. But at the same time, the board decided, um, and I recommended that we start the school year for remote, and we did, and I will tell you, I believe that doing that, we nailed full remote. Our teachers and our students learned what remote, le what remote learning and teaching looks like at a, at a better level than we had done in the spring. And, you know, we did a great job. But over time, that positivity rate ticked down and we were able to start thinking about bringing back our neediest learners. So on September 14th, we brought back our SPED students, our special ed students with IEPs. And when we did that, um, now for the first time, and I shared this with you at the time, we can look at a positivity rate in our zip code over a rolling average of seven days. So at that time on September 14th, our rolling seven day average was 8.3%, 8.4%. And in our region, big region overall, so our partner districts, we were looking at a 6.97% rate. And we brought our kids back and we did great. We brought our SPED kids back. It was awesome. It was good to have them in the building. Um, and then we decided to look at the next phase, which was October 5th. And as you know, we brought back our kindergarten first, fourth graders and sixth graders. And we also brought back our um, ELL students 3.5 and below. Now, why did we bring back those grades? And you'll remember I said, K-1 students are new to the building. It's a new experience. Fourth graders have never been at Washington School. Sixth graders have never been at Lincoln School. So let's start with these kids and bring them back and reintroduce them to what school looks like, you know, in a, in a new setting. And at that time, we had really great positivity rates, still not what the state threshold is, which is 5% or below, but, but decent. We were at 6.2 in our zip code and we were at 6.3 in our region. So those were good decisions, right? Um, if you look and we'll jump down there later, um, we were in compliance with what the guidance was telling us to do. What the guidance was telling us to do is when you have moderate spread in your community, you should be offering a hybrid model where some, st some students are coming to school in person, hybrid, some kids are learning remotely. And that is that is exactly what we did, we did that. Um, but now here we are today. And today um, we can finally look at positivity by zip code on a, on a rolling average by week, right? Every single week it's updated. And we can look at, um, it's, a, it's called the Northwestern app. Um, Northwestern has come out with an app where, where they're actually updating it every week. And they're showing us a rolling seven day average on positivity by zip code, which they, they, they were doing October 5th as well. So, but now our positivity rate in Schiller Park is 16.9% on a seven day rolling average. Seven days, 16.9. That's a big number. In our, in our region, so West Cook, meaning suburban Cook County and West Cook, suburban Cook, we're at 10.5. So Marisol, if you can scroll down a little bit and we'll go back to this other stuff, but just go all the way up to the table where I can show the board um, the colors. So I think it's page two of the document. So we're looking at, you know, we've, we've yet to be in the yellow right? We've, we've yet to be in minimal, but we have hovered in moderate and we've done okay there. If you look at what moderate says, your weekly positivity is below five, but less than eight. And we stretched that a little bit. I'm not going to lie. We stretched it when we, when we brought our special ed students back, we were a little above eight, but we did it. And we did exactly what they said we should do. But when we look at what happens this week. Um, and potentially last week, our positivity has been higher than 8%. We've been in there. If you look at the top, you know, bullet in the, in the second bar, we've been there for two consecutive weeks. So when you look at that, your, your community is considered substantial community transmission. 
And that's where our zip code and our region is sitting right now. So if we can scroll back with that in mind, feels like at this point, it's hard to ignore the fact that we're sitting in the red zone. Um, and I, I really try hard not to, you know, have the news feed running in the background all the time because it's, I don't think it's good for anybody's mental health, but you know, the, the, the numbers are ticking up everywhere, N not just, not just in Schiller Park, but everywhere. So with that in mind, it makes it really hard to say that what we're doing um, is going to allow for us, and Marisol, if you can um, go up a little bit, up a little bit more. Nope, the other way. Other way, yep, keep going. So with that in mind, initially right there, um, we had, I had said to you, we would like to bring more kids back to school in early November, right? I said, our hope is to bring back our second and third graders, and our fifth graders and our seventh and eighth graders in early November. But what's happened now with these numbers and us being in this red zone, substantial transmission, you know, it is it is my recommendation along with 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 my team, and you're my team too. You know, you guys are of course my team. You're you're my leaders, right? I I defer to you, but but I I, I spend a lot of time talking to my principals and and our union leadership about what makes sense and Quite frankly, right now, based on the numbers, it's hard to say to you that we should introduce more kids to our learning community based on what's going on in the broader community. Um, so one might say, well, you know, it's it's not happening in our learning community. And it's true. And Marisol, if you can scroll up and show the board how many we have, it's true that um, we have seven students that are positive and we have one teacher that's positive. And what that's telling us is our mitigation efforts are working, right? And we're not having like clusters of exposure in the learning community. I, I've i never been a gambler and I'm not interested in waiting for that to happen based on the numbers that we're seeing currently in our 60176 zip code and in our West Cook region. So with that in mind, I'm gonna, you know, my recommendation, my, my ask to the board would be that we not reintroduce any more students um, as hard as that is to say, because we've had such great, you know, we, we love having them there, right? It, it, feels, it feels like school, but it's not worth the risk of bringing more kids into the, into the um, schoolhouses at this time. The other thing I'll say is perhaps the board might consider it two week pause where, um, you know, we send the kids home um, starting November 2nd and, um, you know, just give us an opportunity to see if these numbers can, you know, at least get us back to the moderate transmission, which is what it was when we brought back our special ed students and that large group that we came back K1, four and six. You know, but right now it's certainly hard to justify um, not only reintroducing more students, but asking uh, families and, and teachers to continue working um, in our schoolhouses when we know that in the broader community, we're having uh, obviously some issues with, with this virus and it's spread across the community. The other thing that I'm going to ask you to consider and think about is from the beginning of this, we've had, you know, parents that have decided to switch, right? They've gone from hybrid to remote. And you can see those numbers there. We've had 11 uh, students at Kennedy, four at Washington, and 12 at Lincoln switch from hybrid to remote. The other piece of data that I think it's important for the, for the board to see, you know, this wasn't a slam dunk even from the beginning, right? We had a decent amount of parents say, you know what, thanks, but no thanks. We're going to keep our kids home and have them remote learners. And you, uh, you can see those percentages here um, with what we offered. This isn't obviously our total student population, but these, these are the grade levels that we offered hybrid to. And these are those that chose to attend and those who chose to go full remote. And that's, that's you know, not a number to, you know, turn your head around, right? We have, a, we have a decent number of parents that are saying, yeah, I'm gonna just keep them home. 
So um, that's where we're at. Marisol, if you can scroll down to the third page, all the way, the final image. So this is a picture of, uh, they call this the Cook County, we call this the Shiny App, superintendents and I, it's, it's, uh, it's finally Cook County came out and allowed us to look at what's happening to us by, you know, every week in our, by zip code. And uh, this is what's happening in Schiller Park by zip code as compared what, to what's happening in suburban Cook County, as I mentioned to you. Uh, that black line shows a, a, you know, a trajectory that is just shooting up um, in a way that is higher than, if you look back, even when we made the decision to go full remote in July, right? I mean, think about where we are now. Um, and, and, you know, 55 cases last week alone confirmed. The week before it was 40 in, in our 60176. That whole thing right there, uh, that 466 weekly case rate per 100,000. So what that is, it's they, CDC recommends a multiplier because there's such a range in populations across communities, right? So for example, in Schiller Park, I, I, we think it's 12,100 and something, whatever it is, it's, it's every community's population is different, right? So what CDC did is they, is they took a multiplier of 100,000 to determine what would happen, for example, if in your community, your population was 100,000, how many cases would you have per week confirmed? And based on your numbers right now, if you were in a community of 100,000, which I know is hypothetical and you're not, but that, that is again, a multiplier to try to level the playing field so people can think about what's happening in my community versus other communities, you would be in a community that's at 440, 466 positive cases per week. Now think about that for a minute because we know that we already have 445 per confirmed cases in, in you know, Shoulder Park, 55 alone last week. So our numbers are high folks, you know, for whatever reason they're high. And I think that at this time, it, it's, it's not a bad idea to just you know, put the brakes on and hope that the numbers can go down. And, and obviously this is just in an attempt to keep our kids and God love our teachers safe. So that's where I'm at. Thanks, Kim. Um, November 2nd is two weeks away. Right. It, I mean, just just talking it out loud. I I believe yes, there's definitely no more kids coming back, but I do think t November second is too far away if we're looking at fifty five cases a week. I do see the news, and we're in you know coming into the worst of what we're going to be seeing for the next eight to twelve weeks. I'd like to suggest that we go no later than what we have the B kids tomorrow and Friday. Yeah, Thursday, Friday kids. Okay. Yeah, those, that's the B group. I'd like to allow the B kids to finish out the week and give them a heads up and the family up, show them what we're gonna be doing. Um, maybe the A kids for Monday and Tuesday but I really, I would like to suggest we don't go past Wednesday. Wednesday's a remote learning day anyways. It'll give the parents a week to figure out what they can do. Um, the B kids are in school tomorrow and Friday and the A kids are in school Monday and Tuesday. It's, it's still another week. I, I think, you know, we have some risk and of exposure there, but can I, I'm not extremely comfortable going another week after that. Um, and if we do send out communication that, you know, we're gonna do a substantial, um, I'm sorry, a, um, what'd you call it, a, a stop? Adaptive pause. Adaptive pause. It's only to review it again in two weeks. 
it, it's not to make sure we'll br definitely bring the kids back in two weeks. We'll, we'll review the data in two weeks. Um, <coughs> I don't know. Um, waiting two weeks to me is, is a little bit iffy. We have one teacher who's definitely, Marisol, can you go back up to the teacher's students? Okay, so we have one, one person who's definitely out for COVID, um, seven students who hit definitely have COVID. We have 37 students who are quarantined and seven staff. So I, I get the students can still possibly do e-learning at home and the seven staff is, they're doing e-learning? Are they, are, they, um, are they on sick leave or are they working from home? Kim? The seven staff? Do you hear me, hon? Dr. Hey. B, can you hear us? No. Um, I don't know, what do you guys think? I, Kim must have lost our being able to I'm hear. Sorry, I lost you. I, I did, I lost you, Marianne. What, oh, was, that's okay. what was it? We have seven staff at home working remotely right now because of yep. possible exposure. We have seven. We have seven staff at home awaiting uh, COVID tests, okay. and of those thirty-five student, of those thirty-seven students, seven of them are quarantined as a result of the positive case okay. in their classroom. Okay. So what happens is, right, uh, we'll get a call from a teacher that says I was exposed to a positive, and then that that's the other thing to consider here. Um, to no fault of anyone, because we're all just living life, right? But what's happening is we're um, getting teachers exposed, and they're having to stay home and quarantine or get tested. And then I, our principals are subbing, which they're great at, and I think they like better. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But um, it's just, it's what I said in the beginning, right? Uninterrupted remote learning could, you know, potentially benefit our kids more than interrupted in-person learning. Mm -hmm. And that is definitely what we're starting to see happen um, as a result of all these different needs to quarantine students or more importantly, teachers due to potential exposure. Right. And, and I know, um, you know, the thought of closing in two weeks or, you know, going back to e-learning in two weeks. I just don't know how comfortable I am with it, guys. I, I'd like to know what you think. I mean, 55 cases in one week and 46 last week. Do we need to go out two weeks? Or Kim, is it feasible to allow the B kids, or the Thursday, Friday kids come to school and the Monday, Tuesday, get them ready, do whatever needs to be done, if anything, I'm not even sure, but at least get them to have an understanding that you know, you're going back to e-learning, this is what you need to do. Would we be able to work that out by next Wednesday? Well, yeah, I mean, we're ready. Um, uh -huh. we have seamlessly figured out hybrid to the point where we can switch the, we can switch the, you know, flip the switch and transition a remote literally overnight seamlessly. We're fine with that. But I, I do like the idea of giving the, the kids who are on the B schedule and the kids who are on the A schedule, the opportunity to be in person at least one more time. You know, before we just say we're 
moving to full remote. And, and I do too. I, I like the idea of getting them prepared, um, getting everybody ready, the parents giving them notice. I just, I mean, it's uncomfortable to go a week, but I think it's very uncomfortable to go two weeks. So I'm kind of looking for you guys. What do you think? Um, it's, it's, it's very hard but I don't see it. I mean, as it's rising now, I think it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. Oh. Allison, what do you think? Sorry, I had on mute. Um, Miriam, I, I really, I don't know. Do you think we should go back to e-learning? I mean, I think with as high as our numbers are and they're projected to get even higher, I think that would be the best thing to do. Right. I do too. Tina? One minute. Yes, I am. <laughs> Sorry, my daughter just got home. She's like, you're in a meeting marathon today. <laughs> That's right. Um, I struggle, right? And I'm sure the admin team has struggled with this decision. You know, um, you know. hopefully this is just like a burst of cases that are happening in Chiller Park. And in a week we can say, phew, that was one week that was just really, really bad. And we can, you know, bring our kids back and stay in hybrid. Um, you know, doing the hybrid, I will say I notice a difference in my kids, like they seem a little bit more engaged in school, you know, where they were kind of losing the remote engagement. Um, so I agree with probably putting the pause on bringing back more students, as you can see, like the positivity rates going up in that. Um, but I mean, it's hard, you don't, it's trying to look in a crystal ball and see what's going to happen. You right. Don't know. I think I'd like to err on the side of caution here, though. Can I just um, interject at it, though, for a minute? I don't absolutely. want, uh, can I, Tina, just so you know, this isn't just a week. Um, 60176, uh, Marisol, if I can get to my computer, we have not, this is not just, uh, this isn't just this week. Uh, this isn't just, as a, in fact, I don't know how to, wait, I think I can do this. Can I stop sharing? Can, can I get to my computer mirror? There, there it is, thank you. So the Northwestern dashboard um, in Schiller Park since 1013, uh, positivity rate in our zip code, uh, 1013 was 19.7, 1014, 19.7, 1015, 20.7, 1016, 24.1, 1017, 24, 1018, 18.9, 18 1019, 19 percent. So this isn't just over, that's true that it's the average over the last seven days, but that app allows us to look at it every single day, you know? So I've been watching this every single day. So it's not like it's just a little, oop, a little shot up that happened one day in the last 24 hours. This has been happening over time. In fact, the 14 day positivity rate as of today for 60176 is 18.2%. So it's even higher than the 7% positivity rate of 16.9%, right? So I, I only say this to you because I don't want you to think that I'm reacting to something that's happened over 24 or 48 or even 72 hours, right? This has been going on for, we're, we're looking at 14 days now. So at that point, it's time to respond. Right. So, I just, I want the board to understand that. I don't know if I was clear on that. Um, 
this, we have an issue with community um, transmission in 60176 right now. Sorry, I misunderstood looking at the two that, data No, points. that's okay. I just so, want to make sure I was clarifying well, Thanks that. for clarifying. Anna, what do you think? Well, it's obviously disappointing for, for everyone, especially the kids, but you know, I'm on the conservative side too. And, and the most important thing right now is everyone's health. And this just makes sense. Laura? Laura, what do you think? Sorry, um, this is really hard. A very hard decision to make. Um, if we were to come back November 2nd, by the time the kids got settled in and controlled all their excitement, seeing their teachers and classmates, then we're going to be back. That would set us to um, Thanksgiving break. Right. right. And, then, and we'll be off. And let's face it even though we know that this COVID is, is terrible and people are catching it, um, is that really gonna stop families from gathering? You know what I mean? I get, though, I get it, I get it. We know we're not supposed to, but at the same time, it's Thanksgiving and you know, Auntie Myrtle needs to have her green bean casserole, you know? It's not going to stop people from seeing. And then when you have those little small gatherings, that's how it spreads again. And then when they come back to school, mm -hmm. then they're sharing what they just mm -hmm. caught from family members. And then now you're back again doing e-learning. So it's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that's just going to make any child more confused or set back. But I see for Tina and, and your girls, I, oh, I bet they are so excited and I'm sure it's a positive learning experience for them. But man, this is really hard. I don't really see going back. It's just, I don't either. I, I don't see us going back, honestly, probably not until next year. January. I'm sorry. I, this is hard call. It is so hard. I mean, we can't predict. Everything is so uncertain in these times. But if we go back November 2nd, then we have Thanksgiving break, come back again for a day or two, only for some child or teacher to be sick or maybe just a little cold. And it's not COVID. They still have to quarantine. And so I do agree with you. And Kim, you did say that like 100% e-learning as robust as we've made it is probably better than the off on, off on, off on. Mm -hmm. Well, it, you know, um, there's no question about that. Right. And ask, what do you think if we were to, um, if we were to go back to e-learning as of Tuesday? I think that's the best idea. It's it's sad and it's hard for the kids, but like what Kim says, it's better than come because now they used to e-learning and they like it and they woke up in the morning and everything gets ready. But if they start going to school and then after a week, they need to stay home, it's gonna be complicated for them and hard. You're right. And even even January, it's hard to go back because it's after Christmas too. Yeah. Two weeks Christmas, everybody gonna be out. You're right. So I don't know. Andrea, what do you think? I'm torn. I have one in school now on the hybrid, four days a week and I have one at home. Like Tina said, I've seen such a difference in Landon. I mean, he's been great at home also, but I also see the numbers and I've been watching the news and I know that it's probably best for everybody to come back out. And I do think that going back and forth is not great for the kids. Well, I, you know, I, I wanna say this and this isn't about, it's not about, I'm not trying to make this. I mean, I lay awake at night thinking about this and, and I know you all do, but 
I think we have to, I say this all the time. I've said it to, um, you know, my, my administrators and the teachers, right? We have to find the things to celebrate, right? So we should celebrate that we've had the kids, our special ed kids back from September 14th until now. That's something that we should be proud of. And we've done some good work to get them ready and understanding what this whole new school thing looks like. And I feel the same thing is gonna be true for the kids that we brought back on October 5th. We're gonna have three good weeks with them, three solid weeks of them being able to actually see, see with their eyes, their teacher in their classroom and their friends and their teacher being able to physically be present with them. And I think that those little wins are gonna help the kids that we brought back be able to embrace remote learning at a higher level than they did. And I know, I know this isn't ideal. It's not, nothing's like, nothing is ideal, but let's find the wins in this. And there are some wins, you know? So we did good work with our, with our students with IEPs and our, our lower level ELL students. We brought back our youngest students in each building and they got to see their teacher in person and see their new school, what their new school even looks like for Pete's sakes. They had no idea. The kids that went to Washington or Lincoln for the first time, and this pandemic is gonna end and we're gonna get past it and our kids are gonna come back. But we have to make sure that we do it at a time that's safe, right? So right now, it just doesn't feel like that's the time. And it's our responsibility to make the decisions that are the most safe, regardless, regardless. Cause I know, I know tomorrow I'm gonna to get inundated with mean emails, regardless what's going on around us. We have to make the decision for what's safe for the kids and the in the, teachers in our learning community? Well, the first thing, Kim, I don't feel comfortable going all the way to November 2nd. Okay. I, I'm sorry, that's two weeks away and it's, it's double the exposure. You're right. Do you think if we could bring the kids tomorrow and Friday, um, talk to them, explain to them what's going on, that they'll be remote learning again. You know, they've had this and, you know, our kindergarten kids are in school four days a week. Make sure they understand that it's still four days of school. Um, the A kids who go Monday and Tuesday, they know nothing. So I, I'd like to see them come back maybe Monday, get that you know, kind of same thing. We'll be willing to give the kids Thursday and Friday. Um, you know, what's happening? This is what you need to do. But I think that's it. I really don't want to go those two weeks. I, I just, I don't feel comfortable with it. Um, if I'm wrong, you guys tell me. I just don't feel comfortable going out another two weeks when we could really handle it in a few days. Kim, have we had had any other feedback from uh, feeder schools in the area, what they're doing? You know, Allison, it's interesting. Leiden's supposed to start their hybrid on November. Sorry, I'm looking at a calendar. November 2nd. Mm -hmm. uh, I spoke with him today, you know, without publicly talking about what he's doing. There's strong, there's strong consideration there for pushing that back. They did for the first time. They finally brought back some students yesterday. They brought back SPED students yesterday. Um, Mannheim only has their IEP students in. Franklin Park, I don't know. He's just got a different mindset around this. You know, his, I know today he learned of a kindergartner that tested positive. So they sent home that whole class and those teachers. Uh, Berkeley, you know, is full remote. Rhodes is full remote. River Grove, you know, is a much different animal. They've got, I think, 700 kids total K-8. Rosemont has 400 K-8. So, you know, over, everybody has their own ideas and their own dynamics that they're facing around this issue. And, and you keep seeing in the news more districts pulling Mm -hmm. their students back to full e-learning. Yeah, you see it as as their numbers go up also. 
What I'm noticing too is that schools that are full face-to-face -face learning, if they do have to close down a, a school, they'll do it for two weeks and then they'll reopen again. That's what I'm, I'm seeing in certain areas. I don't know mm -hmm. why, but, yeah. but that's noticing. So they quarantine the school, the full school for two weeks and then they open it up again. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that make it harder on the parents to have to, okay, your kids are back in school and now all of a sudden your kids are gonna be home. So you, yeah. make, you make arrangements for those two weeks and then okay now your kids go back to school to me right. that would be hard with that that up and down constantly i mean you want some kind of consistency either they're in school or they're home you know right. set your get your arrangements made and, and this is just how it's going to be and i think and, and as far as kids and as far as thanksgiving the ideal uh i think situation in that way is if the kids and Laura, you said, you know, people are going to gather. They're going to gather. My family, not. we're not doing Thanksgiving this year. As hard as it is, we're just not doing it. Yeah. But the ideal situation would be even after Thanksgiving, the kids would stay home and quarantine for two weeks before going back to school. Which puts us into Christmas break. You know, if we're worried about people having gatherings and, right. you know, seeing aunts and uncles stuff that they they don't normally see every day then they should be home quarantine for two weeks mm -hmm. yeah then we're into december and allison that's not even counting mm -hmm. sniffle here and a little sneeze there right People get you know that's not even counting that so right. it, it's hard it really is hard kim is there any any um, I don't want to say pushback, but any kind of concerns from you or the administration, anybody with just letting it go as of Tuesday next week instead of the following week, letting it go back to e-learning? No, oh, that's fine. I, I mean, obviously we we're trying, I'm trying mm -hmm. to keep the kids as long as we can keep them, but I understand your point, you know, the numbers are high, so um, it makes sense. It, what you're saying makes sense because it gives us the opportunity to bring the B kids back this week and then bring the A kids back next week. So both groups of kids get to come back one more time before we go full remote on Wednesday, which is a full remote day anyway. It's a natural break. That makes sense. And then we'll just put out information that we will revisit in two weeks. We're not setting a date for coming back, um, but we will reevaluate in two weeks. And we'll reevaluate, you know, as time goes on. Mm -hmm. But we can't give a date that they would come back in two weeks. If we could just state that, you know, we'll reevaluate in two weeks. That's fine. So if we start on the 28th, mm -hmm. two weeks, they'll bring us to November 11th. And, um, you know, the community can expect communication from us on November 10th, based on what's going on in 60176 mm -hmm. in the West Cook region. Okay. But if what's happening now is any indication, I think we can all predict what that's going to look like. Right. If, if we have to, we can... Um go ahead and reset a quick meeting. But I think we can also just put this in the hands of Kim and the administrators, um, looking at the numbers and make that decision, um, you know, what they need to let us know. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Um, yeah, Kim, if, if we could just do next week, not the second, okay. uh, the communication that we'll revisit in two weeks. And then, um, you know, let the teachers know, everybody. The more we keep people out of the buildings, the less way we can train, you know, the less exposure we have. I agree with that. The only thing I'll say is 
Um, I do believe, and I, I know the building leaders uh, agree that it is important that we have our teachers in, the, in their classrooms, in the buildings, remote teaching. Um, right, you know, right now with, they're there Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and a half day on Friday. And I'm, I, I think it's important that we maintain that schedule for a lot of reasons. I mean, obviously our, I think our teachers in District 81 are the, you know, they're always professional. They always bring their best, they do their best. But it just gives, gives us an opportunity to troubleshoot when there's tech issues. Um, it gives us an opportunity to collaborate with them. Um, they'll be isolated in their own classrooms. They'll have their own space. Obviously, if something pops up where there's, you know, clusters of cases in a building and that changes, of course, I would inform the board. But it would be my recommendation that the teachers remote teach from, from their classrooms and not from home. Anybody have any ideas, what, any thoughts on that? I think if, if that's okay with the administrators and the teachers, I, I don't see why not. Anybody else? Okay. All right. Um, yeah, let's see how that works. I mean, if, if we see anything. Right now, the teachers are there. How long? Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, half day on Friday, home on Wednesday. Okay. If the numbers go up, if we start to see, you know, more if we start to have teachers testing positive or clusters in our buildings, we can certainly reevaluate that. And I'll stay in communication with the board on that. Okay. But yeah. if, we, if we look at what's going on around us, it's, it's really not uncommon to have teachers come to work and teach from their school. You're saying with the partner districts? Yep. There, it's a mix, you know, it's mixed. It's mixed. Okay, let's see how that goes. I mean, I know we only have one teacher so far that actually tested positive. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do have to say if we see, you know, a couple more. I agree with you, I agree. But like I said, I mean, we have good where mitigation efforts are working and, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, I'm not, I mean, I, I would, our teachers would agree with me when I say teaching isn't a work from home job. So, you know, their resources are at school, their administrators are at school, their support is at school. So let's just try to have them, you know, teach from school. And if we have to reevaluate that, we can do it. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, you always just want to make, make sure that it's the least amount of exposure as possible. So, right. Okay. All right. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start next Wednesday then and um, okay. reevaluate in two weeks. We'll watch the numbers. Kim, if you could update that maybe in a few days and resend us what you have. What you showed okay. us tonight, that'd be great. Um, okay. Today's Wednesday, maybe Monday. Perfect. That'd be a great idea. So they update that, um, that sh the, the Cook County app is updated every Wednesday at two o'clock. Okay. So. Okay, so uh, there wouldn't be anything new by Monday? I, okay. I could show you the daily positivity rates on a daily basis, mm -hmm. but I can't. You know, on a seven day, it's every Wednesday. But right. I can I can show you where we're at on Monday as far as a daily rate. That'd be great. Okay. So is that what we have on our website? That information for parents to see. That link on our that dashboard on our red website is specific to District eighty one learning community. The okay. information that I shared today is about 
60176 in the broader West Cook region. Right. Are we able to put that on our website? We have a link to it there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Well, hard times. Um, um, let's move on to something much more nicer to talk about. Washington School Bed. So this is exciting. Um, we have been, it's crazy, but we've been planning a new school remotely, virtually. Uh, you guys got to see last month, you know, what the plans and the images of the new building look like. So um, we actually have a timeline. Uh, it looks like we're going to go out for bid in mid-November uh, for the new building um, in anticipation of the board approving those bids at the January meeting. So hard to believe, but uh, you will be presented with bids for a new Washington school at your January Board of Education meeting. Wow. And um, we will be, uh, we are on target for um, taking down those three houses on Michigan in early Bay. So the bulldozers will be on site ready to uh, take down those houses when the kids get out of school. I think I'm going to come see it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Thanks, Kim. All right, let's move on to new business action. I'd like to entertain a motion the Board of Education approve the amended 2021 school calendar as presented. I'll move. I'll second. Yes, Anna. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Tina, no. call the roll, please. Sada? Uh, yes. Oops, hold on. Alteras? Yes. Delzati? Yes. Desecchi? Yes. Downs? Yes. Iwanio? Yes. Lukasic? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. I'd like to entertain a motion the Board of Education approve the Embrace IEP contract renewal as presented. A, a second. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Tina, call the roll, please. Sada? Yes. Alturas? Yes. Delzati? Yes. Desecchi? Yes. Downs? Yes. Iwanio, yes. Lukasic? Yes. Motion passes. At this time, I'd like to entertain a motion. The Board of Education adjourn to executive session at 7.55 p.m. I'll move. Okay. Okay. Hello, Laura. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Can I call the roll, please? Sada. Yes. Alturas. Yes. Delzati. Yes. Desecchi. Yes. Downs. Yes. Iwanio. Yes. Lukasic. Yes. Okay. Motion passes. Um, Marisol, if you could set up our room, please. Uh, back in, I think we brought everybody back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion the Board of Education reconvene the regular board meeting of October 21st, 2020 at 8.04 p.m. I'll move. Um, a second. Questions, comments, or concerns? <laughs> Tina, call the roll, please. Sada? Yes. Alturas? Yes. Delzati? Andrea, you're on mute. Yes, sorry. That's okay. Desecchi? Yes. Downs? Yes. Iwanio, yes. Lukasic? Yes. No. Motion passes. At this time, I'd like to entertain a motion the Board of Education approve the classified staff hire of the following. Jerry Henderson, paraprofessional at Lincoln uh, School. I'll move. Laura? Uh, Anas? Questions, comments, or concerns? Tina, call the roll, please. Adam? Yes. Alterez? Yes. 
Delzati. Yes. Desecchi. Yes. Downs. Yes. Iwanio. Yes. Lukasic. Yes. Motion passes. At this time, I'd like to entertain a motion the Board of Education accept the certified staff resignation of Lauren Thorn, Thorn, special education teacher at Lincoln Middle School. I'm with move. Okay, Nass and then Anna. Questions, comments, or concerns? Call the roll, Tina. Sada. Yes. Alteres. Yes. Delzati. Yes. Desecchi. Yes. Downs. Yes. Iwanio. Yes. Lukasic. Yes. Motion passes. At this time, I'd like to entertain a motion the Board of Education approve the long term substitute contract for Kathy Vasilopoulos, special education teacher at Lincoln Middle School. I'll move. I'll I'll second. Uh -huh. Questions, comments, or concerns? Tina, call the roll, please. Sada? Yes. Alteres? Yes. Delzati? Yes. Desecchi? Yes. Downs? Yes. Iwanio? Yes. Lukasic? Yes. Motion passes. At this time, I'd like to entertain a motion the Board of Education approve the agreement between SD81 and the Illinois Education Association. Louise Stumper is presented. I'll move. I'll, move. I'll second. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Okay, Tina, call the roll, please. Ada? Yes. Alturas? Yes. Delzati? Yes. Desecchi? Yes. Downs? Yes. Iwanio? Yes. Lukasic? Yes. Motion passes. At this time, we allow for our second public participation. I don't see anything. Do you, Marisol? I don't have anything in email or chat. And I don't see anybody that is trying to get through either. So we'll move on. At this time, I'd like to entertain a motion. The Board of Education adjourn the regular board meeting of October 21st, 2020 at 8.08 p.m. I'll move. A second. Okay. <laughs> Questions, comments, or concerns? First of all, I'll get the document signed and back to you since we're voted. Okay, please call the roll, Tina. Sada? Yes. Alteres? Yes. Delzati? Yes. Desecchi? Yes. Downs? Yes. Iwanio, yes. Lukasic? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we will get in touch if needed within the week or so. And then uh, we'll make sure everybody's up to date within two weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Have a good Bye. night.